Whether you're working over a counter or a phone, the chance of a successful sale lies at least as much in the hands of the salesperson as it does in the product. Samir Murat is a retail genius who believes that salespeople are products in themselves, and Karishma chatted with him about what it takes to persuade a customer to say, I'll buy. No matter where he may be in the public eye, Tamir Murad projects seemingly boundless energy. And whether he's engaging a potential customer one-on-one -on -one or addressing an audience of thousands, there's a sense that he's speaking to you and you alone. Of course, he also enjoys times when he can sit and recharge in a relaxed setting. But even then, he's focused on fresh ideas and the next deal. You're really passionate about sales and entrepreneurship. I always tell people that the first sale in life is to sell you to yourself. If you're not sold on your importance, nobody else will be. And I realized that at a young age, that everything in life is sales related. A lot of people tend to say that I'm not a salesman. I don't have that sales personality. But anyone can be a salesperson. Everybody is selling all the time. Go for a job interview, selling yourself. So I always maintain that everybody's in sales. Having started out as a telesales agent, Tamir was soon exceeding his targets, breaking records and climbing the corporate ladder. This led him to switching focus from sales to training and other entrepreneurial ventures. What do you think was the turning point for you that really solidified you on the path that you're on? We grew up really wealthy. I mean, my dad gave us a really good life. And at 19, due to circumstances, he lost everything. And that's when I really grew up. I always tell people that you grow up the day that you realize your dad is not a hero. The night that we lost our house, I actually had a meeting with my younger brother and said that, listen, we're not destined for this. It's not written in our stars. This is not what we need to become. And we need to make sure that we buy everything back over the next few years. And Seven years later, I bought the house back that my dad lost. I bought the cars back, the business. I think that was my drive. You know what I love about that is that in life, we all go through stumbling points, moments where we might fall. Um, but what matters is how you pick yourself up. I've got a saying, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Most of the times, you're just upside down. Ah. You see a tuna? That it's looks amazing. beautiful. Thanks. Tell me about sales training. What does it involve and how did you get into it? I've always been a guy reading, attending conferences. Until one day, they asked in the audience, anyone wants to come up and do a, a topic on cold calling? So I took the gap and I blew them away, the organizers. And right there, they asked me to speak at the next sales summit. And then from there, it just skyrocketed. So at the moment, I do sales training for a lot of big corporates. I outsource myself as a sales director. And at the same time, I do sales training for their staff through my company. You have many wonderful titles under your belt. One of them is author. Yeah. Tell me about Mama, I Sold You. I went back to when my dad went bust. You're obviously looking for a job. The first thing I saw was call center sales, no experience required. And I actually drove into this parking area of where the ad said. And as I got there, my car broke down. It's like, go, 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 And I thought to myself, oh my word, how am I going to go home today? Walked into the office with my CV in my hand. At that moment, the boss walked past. And he looked at me and he said, hey, are you in the right place? You look like you belong in a catwalk. And I looked at him and I said, don't look at the suit that I'm wearing now. It's, I, I need to work. I, I don't have anything. And he could see the desperation in my eyes. And he looked at me and he said, just step into my office. Went into his office and he said, you know what, you look like you have a story to tell me. And right that moment, I broke down and I cried. Because you know, you're really weak and you're going through a whole lot of... And right there he said that, I'm going to give you this job if you can make one sale by the end of today. Got into the phone. At 5 o'clock, I still made zero sales. I just had rejection, rejection. I sat there until 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, I called the lady in the Eastern Cape. I couldn't pronounce her name and she said, call me mama. And I made my first sale at half past nine. And I thought to myself, you know what, mama, I sold you. That is such an inspiring story. You are also a producer under your production company, Get Tune Media. Tell me about Sell Hard that you produce. Myself and Tracy, one of my business partners, we needed to find someone to run our media and client relations platform in South Africa. Uh, the head office is in Istanbul. And we said, let's have some fun doing this. Why don't we do a reality TV show? where we find salespeople, let them do different challenges, have some fun with it, and let the winner be Fastless' sales director. You just launched the Global One Minute Film Festival. Everybody wants to be a model or anybody wants to be on the big screen. So why not create this concept where everybody can be on the big screen? And the idea came to me for One Minute Film Festival. How do you hope the festival impacts the South African film industry? I'm an entrepreneur. And to create jobs and collaborations and networking, that for me was key. To see the audience laugh and to see them enjoy themselves. If one kid can get something to do or some work out of this film festival, I'll be a happy guy. How did you go about building your own brand? I needed to make sure that what do I want to portray and what do I want to be out there? That speaks to your appearance as well. You have to look the part to get the yeah. part. Thank you. You know, Karishma, as a 
entrepreneur, I always value a well-tailored suit. What do you think are some of the most important items that every entrepreneur should have in their wardrobes? Well, definitely a black suit. I've got about six or seven black suits in my cupboard. One is velvet, one is linen for every occasion because black goes with summer, it goes with winter. Black is something that you can wear out at night. You can do it when you're speaking at a conference. You can wear it for dinner. Always a classic. When I want to close the perfect deal, I would go with the blue suit because the blue makes a statement of you're not intimidating, being eccentric, you're not wearing black to show that you're overly formal, but you are still classy somewhere in the middle. What is the best advice that you could give a young entrepreneur? Don't listen to anyone. Follow your heart. And at the same time, you've got to know that it's not easy. Sometimes you've got to eat bread on the streets, and other times you're going to be having caviar with presidents. If you can have that life and you can have that roller coaster and you're strong enough to do it, then go for it. If not, don't become an entrepreneur. Salesmanship is often linked to smooth talking, but Tamir makes a convincing proposition by telling it like it is.